Thank you everyone for joining us as we explore executing policies with within CD pipelines with OPA. So I'm Abdul Basit Kabir. I work with InterSwitch. Um, InterSwitch is an African oriented technology driven company focused on facilitating and making payments. I work on improving our SDLC, software delivery lifecycle, where we review and analyze um, how we deliver software and improve it as need be. I'm obsessed with improving continuous delivery pipelines and I'm curious about how things work. So we all know software is eating the world. There's software everywhere. And as long as the software, it has to be delivered. Delivering the software or deploying the software usually takes um, a set of practices and a set of principles. Every delivery is done in line with some certain practice and, that, and those practices are well known within the group that engages in the delivery. This is what we refer to as tribal knowledge. But as any group grows in frequency and size, tribal knowledge gets pushed to its limits. It doesn't scale well. It doesn't, um, it, it, tribal knowledge doesn't have any guarantees and also is difficult to maintain. So this means that some form of formalization of the tribal knowledge needs to be done. When these principles are formalized in a wiki or, or a document, a policy document, then you have something that's more structured, something that it's easy to maintain. But at the same time, policies defined in a wiki or in a policy document are not, they're not, they, they don't have any enforcement guarantees. They're well defined, they're easy to maintain, but there are no enforcement guarantees. So how can you ensure that the policies you need in your software delivery pipelines can always be enforced? You could set up the tool or the software delivery, um, your tooling, your pipelines, you could set them up conforming to certain policies and enforcing those policies. But this is hard coding the policies into the tool. And there are a few issues with it. The first of, whenever the policy changes, then no matter how many pipelines you have, if you have 100 pipelines, if you have 20 pipelines, you need to go and do the rework of hard coding the new policy on these pipelines. The second issue here is the pipelines are not usually context aware. For example, the pipelines wouldn't know when it's a holiday or not. The pipelines wouldn't know who the SRE on call is. Wouldn't it be great to have an engine that knows the policies, can also be context aware, but at the same time, these policies are easy to maintain. We apply an easy to maintain policy to a fully context aware engine. The engine generates the policy decision and those decisions would be used for enforcement. So decoupling the policy decision and the pol policy enforcement where the decision is generated and the, the generated decision is now then used to enforce the policy. Basically, what we need is a decision engine. As we move from tribal knowledge, which is less structured and has less control and will most likely need to be enforced manually. So that's relying on everybody to do the right thing or making someone else go and check whether the right things have been done. We move through Wiki creating your wiki, creating um, a policy document that defines all the policies. So at least now the policies are well-defined, they're easy to maintain, but enforcement has also has to be manual. We could hard code the policies into the tool, into the setup of the tool or into our pipelines. This gives us some level of automation, 
but again the policies are now more difficult to maintain if you put the policy in the configuration so the pipeline goes and picks the configuration and finds if um the if, if the process if your pipeline is conformant to the policy enforces the policy that is in the configuration yeah th this is another level of um this is a better level of automation a better level of maintainability but decoupling policy decision and decoupling policy from your application from your tool set gives you the best level of maintainability and the best in terms of automated um, enforcement all the pipeline needs to do is so the service here represents the pipeline all the um, all the pipeline needs to do is to query that policy engine the policy engine has our policies for OPA that's written in Rego and knows the context based on what what was sent in the query and has the backup data, the data that you, the data that the um, OPA might need to put together with the policy to make a decision. And OPA is just an open source general purpose policy engine. OPA stands for Open Policy Agents. It takes your, you query OPA for a policy decision. It takes your inputs, um, compares it with, uh, it takes your inputs, uses it to generate a policy decision based on your policy in Rego. Um, having, um, being fully context aware with the data that's, um, is, um, it's there. Decisions with um, the open policy agents are decoupled from enforcement. So the pipeline, the service, gets to OPA to generate a policy decision. And that policy decision is now used by the pipeline or the tool to enforce the policy. So a, a system like this, the open policy agent policies written for OPA, where will they actually function in your CD pipeline? Taking a typical CD pipeline that starts from git commit, build, test, package, and deploy, where would an upper policy fit in? I will say everywhere. In commits and builds, you could have a policy that you could have a policy like all checked in, Kubernetes manifest must be valid YAML. Production configurations must not contain UAT parameters. Docker files must be hardened and only use compliant based image. In the test space of the pipeline, only QEs can approve automated tests. All scans must score below, all scans that score below 80% must be manually approved. If for some reason your static code anal um, an an analysis, the score of that is below 80%, you need a manual approval for the pipeline to proceed. QAs must sign off on all production builds. Build artifacts must not contain vulnerable dependencies. These are the kind of policies that OPA could enforce on the package stage of your pipeline. On the deploy stage, and there's a lot done um, in the Kubernetes community with Gatekeeper and the likes. You could enforce, and this is like this, this particular policy has, is not specific to Kubernetes, that applications must not be deployed on weekdays between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. So no deploy between that window, between the 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. window on weekdays. Only fully approved um, service request tickets can be deployed. If you're using a ticketing system to log your changes, only a fully approved ticket can be used in a deployment. And Terraform plans by developers must not have a delete action on any resource other than a VM. So 
checking your Terraform plans and see what the checked in Terraform is meant to do. So let's take a typical example. You have the policy, and this will be the policy in English. Policies must not be, sorry, applications must not be deployed on weekdays between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. What would this policy look like um, in Rego? So in Rego, you would have this policy something like this. And you can check, um, there's a lot of documentation on the openpolicyagent.org website um, on how to write up your, your policy, your Rego files. A policy that enforces um, no deployments between 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekdays needs to know whether whether today is a weekday. So it basically, it uses the current time. It needs to know whether today is a weekday. So as long as today is not a Saturday and it's not a Sunday, then it's a weekday. Also, it needs to it needs to know the time. So we get the time in hours, minutes, and seconds, and just and find out if it's between 9 and 4 p.m. I'll show how this I'll, I'll, I'll show how this policy works. Um, the policy, as I've explained, um, just checks if it's a weekday and if the time is between nine and nine and six. Um, before we actually um, apply this policy and see how it works. Let's validate it on the Rego Playground. So there's a there's this cool tool called the Rego Playground where you can test any and validate any of your policies before you apply it. It's at play.openpolicyagent.org. So just copy it and paste it here, paste your policy here. If you need any inputs, and for this um, particular policy, we don't need any input, you can evaluate it. So between nine and four on a weekday, you get a deny. Um, just to show you, let's see, let's check the time. So um, one thing I like about the regular playground is I can evaluate part of the policy. So highlighting this, I can evaluate the highlighted portion. Um, so you can see that my time currently is 12 hour, or 12, I'm sorry, 11th hour, 38 minutes and 70, um, 17 seconds. Of course, my time zone is Africa Lagos. Um, that's my time zone. If we evaluate the date, the day of the week, today is a Wednesday. So if today is a Wednesday, and the time is 11.30 something, um, then it means that definitely we will get a deny. But just to see if we'll get something else, um, I'll change it to 12, because 11 is, is, doesn't fall within 12 and 16, 12 and 4 p.m., so let's check. Yeah, so we can see that the deny is empty which means that um, this deny phase didn't pass. And just when, if you enable the coverage, you can actually see what lines got evaluated. Um, so the weekly line got evaluated as a true, um, and this line got evaluated as a false. So when this line gets evaluated as a false, there's no need to go to the next line, and the whole um, rule gets evaluated as a false. So let's see how that would work. Um, in your um, pipelines. So switching over to VS Code. So we, we know that we have this policy. Um, so what's, what we did was to now, just for demo purposes, set up um, set up um, OPA as, yeah, as an agent, the OPA agent um, as a pod in my Kubernetes cluster. So this is it here.
So we have the we have the OPA pod and we have the service. Um, so just for demo purposes, I'll also put forward the service so that I can um, always reach it on crawl. So now it's listening on port 80. So open another terminal. So let's see the policy. So if you follow the documentation on setting up um, your OPA as a pod, running run as a pod in the Kubernetes, then you can easily add the policies via um, config files. And that's what I have here. So the same um, date time slot um, policy that we had, we saw in regular file, um, that's what we have here in as a config file. So it times slots. So yeah, this is it. If I mean this a bit. Um, so we can see it's just a config file um, created from that file, from the regular file. And I've applied it to my cluster, but I can also apply it again, kubectl apply. Let's just confirm Saturday, Sunday, between, um, between 12 to 4. Between 12 to 4. Let's start with, with between 9 to Save that. It's it apply F and F my policy, which is it and slots that you know. configured. Um it's it here describe config map. Uh, it's not, yes. Yes, so we can see it's the same. Um, Um, so it's the same policy. Um, you can see it's applied. So let's see. Let, 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 let's see. Uh, let's see how we can try to get OPA to generate a policy decision based on this. So once, so once we know that the policy is applied, we can always query the policy, and um, this you can query since um, we've um, forwarded the OPA um, pod. You can always call it on localhost. So this is to just query the policy. And this is the policy. Um, to the top. Um, this is the policy raw. You can see the name of the policy of our date time slots um, policy dot policy time slot dot regular. So how do we get the policy decision? Uh, to get the policy decision, we can also use a curl. So this is uh, using the curl. You can basically use any tool and just add a webhook stage that makes the policy um, call to OPA to get the policy decision. Once you have that policy decision, then you can decide what to do with it. So using a curl command to get the policy decision for the same policy we just added. And this is exactly what we had um, when we had um, when we tried to get the policy decision on the regular playground or deny using the nine to using the nine to four. So let's make a modification and change it to and and change it to um, four to four. So 
So edit uh, edit this, save, um, keep CTL apply. Apply the config map. This is taking some time. Yes. Describe the config map just to confirm, yeah, and generate the policy decision again. This time I'll add deny to go to the specific policy decision. Yeah, we can see there the, there's no result here, and which means that. Um, that policy, that particular policy decision didn't evaluate. And that's exactly the same case as what we had, what, what, what we had when we used 12 here. Deny was empty. So basically there were, there were there was no results of running the deny policy. Okay, so this all looks good and fine when you're doing it um, using crawl. Um, but you know, how does it really fit into a pipeline? And because I'm very con um, conversant with Spinnaker, I'm very um, comfortable in Spinnaker, we can test it out on Spinnaker. And I'll be using um, a vendor's tool. I'll be using um, the OpsMX um, rendition of OpsMX modification of Spinnaker. Um, so I'll show you that in a bit. Let's switch over to the so starting with the uh, enterprise, the open enterprise Spinnaker. So this is like the enterprise um, platform or enterprise components of the um, of the OES that's open enterprise Spinnaker by OpsMX. We there's there's a policy management page where you can create new policies. Um, so I'll just create a new policy. Um, no. So yeah, no, we can do deploy. Um, sorry, you have a name. Okay. Deploy. Um, focus open is our policy engine. That's the engine. You'll see this description and can do anything you want. But I'll, I'll just paste the same policy here. Um, so copy this. And it still has our um, nine to six, right? Um, so let's test that. So save this policy. So no wiki deploy. Um, so now to add the policy to um to the to a pipeline and that can be done um still on the enterprise platform so you go to setup here you'll see your list of um several pipelines several applications sorry and you edit a particular application so we'll use the test pipeline test policy pipeline so create a policy create a policy stage Choose the environment, give it a particular name. Um, it doesn't depend on anything. Then you can choose your policy. So we're working with the node weekly deploy. Save this. So just to confirm. Yeah. So let's switch to Spinnaker and see. Um, see you on Spinnaker. So yeah, this is the same application, test app, um, the same pipeline test policy. And let's just confirm. Um, yeah, it's getting the right policy. This is exactly what we have from our policy um, policy management. Package of our policy up to um, eight time slots. 
So executes. And we should expect it to fail because um, on the policy, we have a time between nine and four. And yeah, it failed rightly. Was the failure output? We can see there's a deny. No deployments allowed between 9, p um, 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. So let's modify the policy and see if we can get it to pass. Um, so I'll just put a time that is very close to the um, end window. Um, so let's put three. Let's put three here, which is 15 hours. So save. Come back here. Execute. And this should pass here. Yeah. Success. So this is something you can easily do in your pipeline. Uh, make this stage a prerequisite to another stage. So, um, except if until this stage passes, the next stage wouldn't wouldn't run at all. And you can easily block all um, policy violations using this. So you can see we've described, we've explained how you can um, use policy, add policies to your pipelines, and hopefully um, you'll go out, check the open policy documentation and explore more on what you can do with policies there. there will, the possibilities are limitless. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. So thank you everyone for joining, joining the session. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer. Um, so there, there, there are some chats that were going on in the, um, some discussions going on in the chat. Um, but let me f start first by answering the question, um, the Q&A tab. Um, hi, thank you for your talk. Is there a way to use OPA to limit the origin of Docker images that are allowed to running inside a Kubernetes cluster. Yes, you could use OPA as um, gatekeeper. So, so there's this, um, what should I call it? Um, so OPA can be deployed as um, an admission webhook um, using the gatekeeper project. And that will limit what, with that you can set um, limits on what can run in your Kubernetes clusters. Um, however, um, the parts of um, the focus of this talk was to look at um, where OPA fits in in the CI CD pipeline, your CD pipeline. And to so you can, instead of just stop, stopping the Docker images at the end, at the point of deployment, you could stop them all the way um, at the beginning when the um, code is committed to to your um, Git repository. And you, you can you can use this, there's another project, um, I think it's ConfTest, I'll put that in chat. Um, so confidence, you can use that to um, to check what gets um, pushed into your Git repository and um, run them against some policies. Um, another question, do you have, um, do you use or have considered GitOps, why or why not? Um, I, I I don't think I can talk much about GitOps. Um, it's something that I've, that's, that's, that's very interesting and I've looked into it. Um, but currently we are not adopting that. Um, so OpsMX doesn't have a way to load OPA policies directly from Git, from Git only via UI. Is this manual or do you have any recommendation, recommended way to manage this with version control and automatically? Um, so I've discussed with the OpsMX team and I, I know um, having um, policy from your um, policy version in any in maybe a Git repo is something that they're looking into uh, um, as part of the what you call next set of features that they, they might be delivering. Um, but again, feel free to reach out to up. I think they the you find them in the maybe vendors or Expo Lounge. Um, maybe they'll have more information on that. Feel free to reach out to Opsmx. Um, so let me just check the chat. 
So one more minute. Um, do you deploy outside Kubernetes clusters right now? Yes, we deploy outside Kubernetes clusters. And what I showed with OPA, um, with our policy, with our pipelines, um, that would work whether or not we're deploying to Kubernetes or not. Um, so basically, it works on the pipeline, not, um, not, not, not where you're deploying it to. So any more question? How are we doing with time? Can you validate Terraform code? Yes, you can validate Terraform code and integrate with other pipeline checks in over. Yes, you can do that. Um, on the on the OPA website, openpolicyagent.org, there is a Terraform example. And I think we're about out of time. Okay, thank you everyone. And I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, feel free to reach out to me. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and I'm dropping my email. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone.